The last section of this chapter is on perpendiculars and distance. Specifically, how do we calculate the distance between two lines using the perpendicular segment? The first thing we need to review is how do we calculate the distance between any two points? Hopefully you remember the distance formula. If not, it's located inside the back cover of your book. If you can't find it, feel free to ask me and I'll help you out. To calculate distance, we first subtract our x-coordinates, square them, subtract our y-coordinates, and also square them. We have 7 minus minus 3, which becomes seven, negative 7 plus 3, which will be negative 4 squared. We have negative 2 minus minus 5, which would become 3 squared. Negative 4 squared is 16. 3 squared is 9. The square root of 25 is 5. What we've just found is that the distance between the points negative 7, negative 2, and negative 3, negative 5, the distance between them is 5. Now let's see how we could use that to calculate distance for a point and a line, or a line and a line on a coordinate plane. The first thing we need to remember is how to construct a perpendicular line. We have done this once before, so if you want to look back, it's on page 44, activity 2, or it was also found in lesson or in chapter 1. The first thing we need to do is place our compass point on our point that we're going to create the perpendicular for and create an arc that crosses our line or segment. It needs to cross it twice, so we need to get it open far enough so that it, we cross twice. I've now crossed my line two times. Now what I need to do is move my compass to either of the points that it crossed. I've marked them with a smiley face so that they're a little bit easier to find when you look at my picture. I move my compass to one of the two making sure that it's greater than halfway across. Well, my compass is definitely past the halfway point, so I'm going to draw my arc. Okay, now what we need to do is take and draw that exact same arc from the other point. Be careful not to change the width because we want to do the exact same size arc from the other point. Move your compass point down to the other arc and again draw our arcs. You'll notice if you've done it correctly you should have now the ability to draw a line or a segment that crosses your two arcs and will be perpendicular to our red original line. So we'll have a perpendicular right there. If it doesn't look perpendicular, then you may have done something incorrectly. If that was a problem for you, what I would suggest is practicing it one or two or maybe even three more times because you're really going to need to know how to do this for today's lesson. Our question here is to find the distance between line M and P. So we have a line and a point. The first thing you need to do is neatly, using a ruler or straight edge, neatly place the line onto the graph. The first thing you want to do is graph your points. We have our first point at negative 6, negative 9, our second point at 0, negative 1. Now using a ruler or straight edge place carefully place a line or a segment that goes through those two black dots. So I have my ruler down. Now I want to carefully draw my line. 
I now have my line on my graph. Next I need to put the point negative 7, negative 2 on my graph. So once again, I'll go negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then down 2. Now what we're going to do is calculate, or excuse me, construct the perpendicular bisector. First open up your compass so that it's wider than the line, or distance to the line, then create your arc. Then move the compass to one of the two ends where it crosses and create another arc. Then do the same thing from the other end. And lastly, construct the segment through where the two arcs cross each other. We've now constructed a perpendicular bisector. What we want to do is we want to find the distance from this dot that I circled in green to the point where the perpendicular bisector hit the line. Because as you remember from what we've studied many times in the past, the shortest distance between any two points is a straight line. So we want to calculate the distance from the point negative 7, negative 2 to the point negative 3, negative 5. And again, we found the point negative, neg negative 3, negative 5 by using the construction technique. Now we're going to use the distance formula. We take x minus x squared plus y y minus y squared. With this, we get negative 4 squared plus 3 squared, which from you remember on our last question was 16 plus 9, which would give us 25, which gives us 5. So the distance between the point and the line is 5 units. Next, we want to calculate the distance between two parallel lines. How did I know they were parallel? Well, I noticed the slope of this one was 2, and this one was also 2. The first thing you need to do is graph the two lines. Remember, to graph lines, we can simply use, first use the y-intercept of negative 3, and then we use the slope, up to over 1. We now have two dots. That's enough to graph our line. Remember, any two points is enough to determine a line. Now we'll do the exact same thing with the other equation. We go up 3 this time, and then we go up 2 and over 1. Whoops, I noticed the first dot I'm off by a little bit. There, that looks a little better. I knew right away that mine were off because my slopes didn't look the same, and they should look identical. Now we need to create a line that passes through each of those uh, sets of points. I've now created the two lines or drawn the two lines that have gone through each of the points. What I'm trying to find is I'm trying to find the distance from one parallel line to the other one. In order to do that I need to use the distance formula. But in order to use the distance formula I need two sets of points. Well, I already know one. I can use any of the four dots as my first point. I'm going to choose to use this dot right here. I know exactly where that dot is located. It is at 0, positive 3. So I know one of my points is at 0, 3. 
what I need to now use the construction techi technique to figure out is where is the other point located? It's over there, but we don't know where. We don't want to use guesstimating. We actually want to use our construction method. Our construction method, we need our compass first. We place our compass on our point that we know, so right here. We extend it so that I'm going to cross twice. Then go to one of your two vertices or two points where the arc and the line cross. Create an arc. Don't change your setting. Do that same thing from your other arc. And you now can draw your perpendicular line in. It's going to go through this dot and through this dot over here. Now, using the construction method, we are doing a little bit of estimating. So what we're going to estimate is where this dot right here is located. It looks to me like it's over about 2.2, maybe 2.3 and it looks like it's up about 1.7. We could be off by a little bit, but we should be close. Now we go back to the distance formula. For that, again, we do x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. Obviously, you might need to use a calculator for these because we're working with decimals, which is a little bit more challenging. Are you following me so far? Okay, now we need to square 2.3. we get 5.29. Add that to 1.3, which is 1.69. Notice whenever you square, the decimals go away. We're down to 6.98. So lastly, you take the square root of that, and you get your answer, which is 2.64. Round it to two decimal places would be best. So somewhere between two and three units is our distance. If we look back at our picture, that seems like a real reasonable answer. It doesn't look like it's three boxes, but it's definitely more than two. Now if I got an answer of like eight right there, I definitely would know I'm incorrect. Here's one more example. Find the distance between y equals 5 and y equals 13. Think, do you remember what a y equals equation is without the x? I hope you do, because that is the equation of a horizontal line. So we have one line at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And our other line is way up at 13. So I'm going to draw it way up here. Now our first instinct would be to get out our compass and create our perpendicular again. But the nice thing is, when you have horizontal or perpendicular lines that are parallel, all you actually need to do is count. We are at 5, and I can just go straight up, so I know the line that will go straight up between these is perpendicular. So I can just count it off. Five. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Or simply 13 minus 5, which is 8. Sometimes it works a little bit easier because you are given the parallel or perpendicular lines. If you're not given parallel or perpendicular, though, you will have to use the construction method. Hopefully you took good notes. You may need to rewatch a couple of the sections. Make sure to ask me any questions when you come back to class.